Hi, everybody. Um, thanks very much for coming along to our session today. Um, well, Danny, I'm a learning technologist from DCU, and I'm here with uh, my colleague Suzanne as well, also from DCU. Um, and we're going to kind of treat this as one whole session, um, if that's OK. Uh, so we will speak uh, at the beginning about um, our EDTL project, um, and then uh, in the latter half, we're going to be looking for your input and assistance uh, with a particular task. Um, I might turn off my video now to save my bandwidth, and we'll just get kicking off. So I hope you can all see our slides now on the screen. Um, the slides can be accessed at the bit.ly link there uh, afterwards if you want to take a look back over it. Um, but let's uh, kick off. So what we hope to do in this session is give you a bit of a background to our EDTL project, which stands for Enhancing Digital Teaching and Learning. Speak about the structure, speak about the community that's built up around it, talk about um, how we piloted this project in our own university um, and how we focus on the topic of technology enhanced assessment and then we'll also share with you some of the preliminary findings of our evaluation and then some refinements and adaptations that we are making uh, going forward um, so just to give you a, a bit of a background and I won't I won't labor this point but I suppose there's a, been a general um, shift or, or, or consensus or conversation happening uh, at various levels in the last few years around the need to equip our graduates with the necessary digital skills and competencies so that they can succeed in the workforce. And this is uh, uh, spoken about in, in the new skills for Europe, where they talk about making sure European citizens are adequately skilled for the ever-changing uh, economy. Uh, we have our EU Digital Education Action Plan, which many of you will be familiar with, which I suppose aligns very much with the skills agenda and uh, puts forward a number of, of concrete and distinct actions to uh, enable uh, uh, digital education. Here at a national level in Ireland, we have uh, our own national skills strategy, which again is very much aligned to the European skills agenda and, and really calls uh, on higher education institutions to make sure that our graduates uh, coming out of our Irish institutions are uh, suitably equipped for the ever working world. We have a national strategy uh, for higher education, which calls on institutions to adopt uh, greater levels of e-learning in their provision of, of, of programs. At a sectoral level, uh, the, the seven public universities in Ireland are part of an organisation called the Irish Universities Association, or IUA, which is a representative body. And uh, that body, the IUA, has a charter, in, uh, launched a charter in 2018, which seeks to make sure that the Irish university system um, is, is uh, as, as good as it can be and, and it, that it can offer uh, a, a very robust digital learning experience for all of our students. And then, of course, like many other institutions, we have a strategic plan in DCU uh, with, with, with many, many ambitions in it, one of which is to increase the number of digital learning um, experiences that we offer our students. So what we can see is really at various different levels, a number of policies, a number of strategies really coming together to provide a ripe opportunity for something to be done about this whole area of improving the digital experience of students, improving the digital skills and competencies of them. Um, so the IUA uh, applied for some funding from the Higher Education Authority in Ireland to develop what they initially proposed as a digital learning programme. So a programme where academic staff in the university could upskill around their own digital skills and competencies with the view to improving their courses and their modules so that students' own digital learning experiences could be improved. Um, so thus was born the Enhancing Digital Teaching and Learning Project, or EDTL. So it's a three-year project, and the aims are, of course, to enhance the digital attributes and digital experiences of, of the Irish uh, university students, and uh, more specifically, to, to roll out a, a staff development program to enhance the digital confidence, skills, and competencies of all those who teach in Irish universities. So we're not targeting just professors or lecturers or just full-time teaching staff, but we have a very broad uh, conception of people who teach and people who support teaching in our universities. 
Um, and the approach is to mainstream digital in, in teaching and learning. We're all very familiar over the years with the concept of, of champions. You know, we've all had champions in our, in our departments in universities who are great at digital teaching and learning and they're the go-to people but this project aims to kind of mainstream that and get away from this idea of the champion on the pedestal uh, but rather lift up the skills of everyone who's involved in teaching. Uh, these are the kind of four pillars that underpin the project. We recognise that you know each of the seven universities have a lot of, of, of professional development opportunities already, uh, so this project doesn't seek to uh, undermine existing CPD approaches but really build on them. We focus very much on pedagogy first, not technology first, so we speak a lot and, 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 and in our uh, development with, with academic staff. We talk a lot about what it is they want to achieve and, 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 and what learning outcomes they want their students to achieve and then the, the explore ways in which technology can embed that. We treat things on a, on a discipline level, so we work with teams uh, in programs or teams in, in schools and departments rather than working with individuals or rather than working with a, a mishmash of, of um, academics from different disciplines in the university. We also uh, value this quite a lot. Uh, we have uh, a number of student interns involved in the project. interns who lend to all of our activities. Uh, there's the, the structure. Um, we have, um, as I mentioned, a project manager in the Irish University Association. We have different project leads in the seven universities and myself and Suzanne are the leads uh, in DCU. Uh, we have student agents um, and we have um, a, a steering group made up of senior management uh, from the different institutions and that senior management buy-in we found is, is really, really very important. We utilise the um, your use this framework to uh, engage with the academics and, and have them explore what's their current level. So what areas within this framework do they want to explore? Um, so that is quite a, a, um, that is a useful um, framework. Um, I'm seeing some messages about my internet connection, so I do apologize. What I might do is, Suzanne, if you can hear me, can you take over from here? Yeah, sure, um, Rob, I was just texting you there. Um, apologies for that, guys. Um, so, uh, as Rob said, uh, one pilot with seven different flavors. Uh, I, I guess can can you just make uh, just to make sure that you can hear me, okay, uh, so that we don't have continuing issues with audio. Um, brilliant, excellent. Uh, one pilot, seven different flavors. You'll see um, a little bit of information on the slides. I popped the bitly into uh, the chat box uh, a couple of minutes ago. Obviously, we're more. Um, uh, we're going to speak more about uh, the experience at DCU today, just to give you an idea of um, of the experience at DCU. Brilliant. Um, but before I do that, I just want to um, highlight one of the successes at national level of the project. Um, Self-proclaimed uh, success, but it has been very successful, particularly after the pivot to online learning because people were reaching out and looking for a kind of a learning community to engage in. And that's our community, uh, uh, our learning community, which we kind of, we facilitate through a, a webinar series, uh, which allows practitioners to come together, share their experience. Um, we do kind of have a semi-formal structure in that we have one uh, or two very short presentations at the start and the idea is to focus on the discussion afterwards and we'd like to invite you along to uh, join that community more information on the blog you'll see the information uh, the the blog um, url here 
Um, there is a, a session happening today as we speak. It's clashing with our session. Please don't leave us uh, and, and go to that one. But you might um, check out that session afterwards. The recording will be available on our Vimeo channel and also from the EDTL blog. There is one that you may, some of you um, who are working or supporting people who work in, in lab-based subjects, there's an upcoming webinar. Thank you, Fiona, for popping that in. That's brilliant. Um, coming up on the 7th of uh, September with uh, some guest speakers, um, Andrew Gard and uh, Michael Seary. So we'd invite you to engage with that learning community. Um, it has been very active and very lively. Some of you may have attended already. Uh, but we'd love you to see some of you at one or more of those events in, in the future. Um, at DCU then, our focus is on technology enhanced assessment. And why did we choose assessment as our focus? Well, assessment, uh, as we know from the literature, um, influences all teaching and learning or all aspects of teaching and learning, which is why we, we decided to take that approach. We have four distinct but interconnected work packages, which centers around a staff development program, uh, but also um, involves the development and maintenance or revision of online resources. Uh, we've also committed to ongoing technical enhancements for our VLE, which is Moodle. Uh, that's obviously in discussion with participants and uh, the broader university community. And then our communications and dissemination package. The staff professional learning program is based around a suite of 10 workshops, which drew on a step established professional learning opportunities and staff e expertise within the teaching and enhancement team and beyond the team. So as, as um, Rob outlined earlier, one of the pillars is that you're not start starting from scratch with this, this project that uh, we're building on work that's already been done in the past. Um, the pilot phase, the development of, of the project worked a little bit like this. So we developed the suite of uh, assessment workshops. We discussed um, those workshops with our potential participants uh, from the school, uh, from the Faculty of Education and a school of psychology. We customized those workshops based on discipline specific needs. We developed pre-work workshop uh, learning activities, more about those later, not so successful, unfortunately. We delivered three pedagogy focused workshops to participants, followed that up with individual and group consul consultation to support the planning of their uh, technology enhanced assessments. We offered ongoing support in the implementation of those assessments. And then we reviewed and refined uh, that pilot phase and what we learned from that pilot phase. Essentially, we applied in uh, phase two of the project, uh, which happened from February to April this year in the middle of all the madness. Um, but I guess the, the first learning for us that uh, and we'll be discussing this later on in part two of this session is the need for um, the need for staff to conceptualize digital assessment. A lot of the staff that were the participants that we were working with had a little, uh, a little difficulty imagining alternative assessments. I know that things have slightly changed and people have been pushed to um, imagine alternative assessments uh, with the COVID crisis, but we're talking about September to December last year. So the idea um, came about to develop a set of exemplars um, of digital assessments and we found that while a lot of people in our immediate circle um, had some excellent exa examples of uh, digital assessment we wanted to build on that and, and thus grew the idea to develop an open education re uh, resource and to um, to crowdsource uh, exemplars uh, through a broader community. And we're going to ask for your help with that uh, in part two of this session. Uh, another learning from the pilot was that flexibility was needed for delivering the, the professional development. Uh, you know, I mean, that's an old lesson, but even before COVID, we had already begun to deliver some of the sessions online. Um, a very interesting finding was that originally we had structured the workshops so that we would incorporate a piece of practical work uh, and the idea was that we felt if participants left the workshops 
uh, having discussed the, the, the why of digital assessment and a little bit of the how to and had something tangible to, to leave the sessions with, we felt that would that would be a great achievement. But actually, we found as we deliver the workshops that the discussion around the pedagogy and the the why to of the, the of introducing technology into assessment was much more important for them. Uh, and also because and um, they were working together in schools or maybe program teams um, that that pe that discussion space was really, really valuable for them. Uh, particularly because a lot of the time, you know, the 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 amount of times or the 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 um, the space that they have to have such discussions can be very limited in a busy schedule. Uh, we also found that the pedagogy focused workshops where they were excellent and and there was good space for discussion there. Uh, they also needed to be followed up by almost separate technology or how to uh, workshops. So we've built that into the program. And in a lot of cases, we have actually um, delivered those online because they, they kind of lend themselves more to an online uh, space as well. Uh, the pre-workshop task, as I mentioned uh, in the last slide, too time consuming, people didn't really engage with them. So we simply removed them and thought again about our structure. One of our pre-workshop tasks was involved the uh, asking participants to engage with the DigComp Edu framework so that we would have an idea of their digital competence before engaging with the project and uh, subsequent to um, engaging with the project. Uh, while we found that the framework was very useful, um, it's quite dense in the way it's laid out and participants needed some scaffolding to engage with that. Um, we attended a, a really excellent GISC workshop last, um, I think it was just before Christmas last year in, in Edinburgh when we were all able to fly and uh, meet each other in person. Uh, and there was an excellent um, presentation or workshop around gamifying um, engagement with those types of frameworks. Now that one was the, the, the GISC framework, Digital Capabilities Framework, but we've adapted that approach to develop a gamified or digital pursuit um, board game approach to engaging um, participants with that framework. And now obviously we, we had uh, tried it out in a face-to-face -face environment before COVID, worked really well participants responded really well to it there was a bit of fun involved and it also because we were working together in a group it people encouraged each other they remembered things um that their colleagues had engaged in in terms of digital capabilities and that discussion piece was was really really useful and well received we have tried that on uh, an online version of that as well and again works works really well and last finding then in terms of development, we had kind of focused very much in our work package on the development of online resources that were tech focused. But we did find that people were looking for um, non-tech focused resources as well. And one example would be uh, how to facilitate or scaffold group work. So uh, that was interesting to us as well. Uh, there's an evaluation underway. Um, as per our pillars, the student voices is key to that. Uh, we have conducted focus groups uh, back in April online, of course. Um, very, very interesting findings. I'm going to speak a little bit about those in a moment. Um, and also we've gathered participants anonymous reflections on the project. We're using Bamber's framework um, to ev evaluate impact just to take us beyond quantitative data, um, you know, figures, participants, et cetera, towards an evidence of impact on practice in the longer term. And then we're working with the Irish National Forum for Teaching and Learning to develop a badge uh, for participants based on their, um, their participation in that, um, in the project. Is there an online version of the game? Uh, I see a question coming in there. Uh, we have an online version of the game that we're very happy to um, share with you. Uh, Mel, we'll pop that uh, into the chat box towards the end of the session. Okay, so uh, the evaluation, uh, the academic reflections then. Um, Rob, I don't know if you can come in on this and give it a go. I'm not sure how, how, how is my internet, is, is, my, is my audio still poor? 
perfect notes really good at the moment. So yeah. maybe. Um, I, I won't. I won't keep you long then. So as um, as Suzanne said, we have um, done an evaluation with academic staff. Um, it is preliminary. We haven't collected all of the all of the uh, anonymous reflections from the staff, but from the reflections that we have gotten in so far, there's some nice themes emerging. So the academics are placing them in around the same level on the Digcomp EDU framework or perhaps one level above us um, which is 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 good you know we weren't expecting staff to suddenly be revolutionized overnight um, with their digital competencies uh, they speak a lot about confidence in in using de technology which is here and there's a really nice quote here about building community as well so um i think that's one of the great benefits of working with with colleagues um uh, who are focused around a discipline is that they can kind of build this community and they can continue these discussions uh, after they they finish our professional learning program uh they've made lots of plans for future practice things like e-portfolios uh formative assessment using technology um uh, adding flexibility to their assessment formats using technology so maybe offering students a chance to do video assessments instead of text assessments uh, a lot of the people involved were teacher educators uh, and they had a particularly interesting insight in that they felt it was important for them to model good digital pedagogy for their own student teachers who they're teaching. By no means was it all rosy, they do recognise there are challenges involved in ongoing development of the digital competence and, and again will be no surprise to the people here in the room, uh, the lack of time for innovation and time for, for redevelopment, uh, the kind of sense that it's easier to maintain current practice and um, assessments, uh, and of course, the ever-present danger of technical hip hiccups, as indeed I myself am, am experiencing now in real time. So I'll hand you back over to Suzanne. Great, Th thanks, Rob. It just struck me that I, I, uh, you had done that piece of work, um, so I didn't really know what I was talking about for that slide. Um, okay, so the initial analysis of the student focus group data then, um, we did focus groups with um, four separate groups, no, three separate groups uh, of four in each group, and the findings were just really rich. We, we couldn't, um, we were really excited by the findings, but we're at the early stages of analysis, so we've just pulled out uh, five findings to date. Um, I thought this was very interesting, uh, a suggestion from, from, from the group around digital feedback for exams, which seemed to uh, resonate with the rest of the group uh, to be explored um, in more detail later. But uh, the idea was that, you know, you often get feedback around continuous assessment, but you don't really get it around exams beyond your grade. And uh, they were suggesting that maybe that might be of benefit. They were very positive about digital feedback in, in general. And I thought this point was really interesting uh, and it related to um, the difference between feedback for those who have done well in, in a piece of work and those who had not done so well. So, I mean, obviously there is a long conversation to be had if people are struggling with a piece of assessment. But um, the point was made that for those who have done actually quite well in their assessment, Digital feedback is really useful because it can be um, short and sweet and, and give guidance around how to make improvements and avoids the long conversation that, uh, uh, that may be needed if, if they had been struggling a little bit more. So I thought that was interesting. Uh, there was a suggestion to tie alternative assessments or technology enhanced assessments more closely to career needs. And one example that was offered was uh, the need to use like basic um, uh, document, you know, um, uh, software, pieces of software such as Excel, uh, that students feel they don't get enough practice on, on basic stuff that they are almost definitely required to use in, in their um, postgraduate career. Uh, we often focus on the VLE kind of related, you know, a quiz or um, indeed the portfolio, which they were very positive about as well. But the need to kind of expand that a little bit well, uh, came through in the focus groups. Very, very positive about the por portfolio and would encourage more use of the portfolio. Again, interesting. 
And the last um, finding that uh, we just wanted to present to you was that students were suggesting more and more collaborative learning assessments that they feel they're really valuable and authentic uh, in terms of assessment. So in terms of the project response to COVID then, obviously everything was turned on its head somewhat uh, in March. Uh, at national level, the project refocused focus to support blended and online delivery, uh, uh, obviously, for 2020 uh, and into 2021. So the, the approach that we took was there were an abundance of resources out there um, it, to support staff um, uh, to get, you know, to, to get online, depend, you know, um, from total novices to those who have been teaching online for years. But the approach we took was then it to cur curate the resources and offer a framework for, for people to engage with those resources rather than reinventing the wheel. And those resources are available on the EDTL website, which we popped into the chat earlier. Uh, we very much looked at, OK, there was a lot of panic at the start and it's been really, really busy. Um, a number of months, but we're looking at the crisis as an opportunity, and certainly in terms of alternative assessment, uh, the availability of the OERs, which we're going to speak about in the second half of this session, really supported people to imagine alternative assessments. And um, you know, they had to; it was something that they had to do uh, last term, uh, given given the crisis. Uh, the impact of the pilot then. Um, EDT participants, just I suppose this is outside of the formal evaluation, but it's it's coming through in, in some of the reflections that EDTL participants felt better prepared for the crisis, particularly in respect of designing alternative assessments. Anecdotal at the moment, but it we feel it will come through in the reflections as well. Okay, so in summary, uh, the project, uh, driven by you know discipline specific and and needs identified at various levels, um, tailored to participants' needs, uh, scaffolded support and ongoing support is a very important aspect of the project. Um, the student voice central to to the project again one of the four pillars. Um, and very much informing our skills development for staff uh, moving into the future. Um, mixture of types of engagement, some at sur surface level, some uh, really strongly engaged with every aspect of the project. But we, you know, we've just kind of adapted to, to suit people's individual needs. Uh, and the, ad the adaptation to resulting from the COVID crisis we're seeing as a real opportunity, we're like, Glass half full people at the moment. So guys, thanks very much for your attention there. We're going to move into uh, the second part of this session, but I might just take a pause and see if um, if you've got any questions uh, at the moment. Feel free to come on the mic or, or pop them into the, the chat box. I, I think yeah. there's one question there, Suzanne, from uh, Mel asking, how much engagement did we get from employers, if any, from a discipline perspective? Uh, and that's actually really quite interesting. We, we, we didn't engage with employers directly because the, the disciplines uh, that we worked with don't um, necessarily have a very clear cut uh, relationship with a particular industry or, or indeed particular employer. So we were, I suppose, more conscious about general um, um, uh, digital skills and, and digital competencies rather than specific skills and competencies uh, related to specific um, uh, industries. Uh, however, I do know one of our partner universities in the project, Maynooth University, they have been doing some interesting work with their careers service and trying to ask from employers what are the kind of specific skills that they are looking for from graduates. Um, and that is something that, 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 that we plan to turn our attention to in, in DCU as well. Um, does anyone else have any other um, questions? Um, I see some of you are, are are leaving. You probably have another another session you you want to get to. Uh, oh, thank you. Some nice comments coming in the chat. Thank you, Natalie and, and Ute. 
thanks very much guys i might just um keep moving then um rob you jump in when you can and um i'll keep going if that's okay is that all yeah, right with you? perfect yeah keep going okay so the next uh the game link uh dawn i'm going to pop that into the 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 slides um so it'll be available on the slides after this session I, I just wasn't able to put my hands on it there uh quickly so um the the game the link to the game or our version of the game um will be